Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for an opportunity to come and study your word, Father. Yeah. And then pass on, Father, what is in our hearts. Yeah. Just ask that you would open our hearts and our minds, Father. Mm -hmm. So that whatever is said, Father, is what you would have to say. Yeah. And that it be taken, Father, from you and not from your own. Yeah. And that it may come from and make us better in our daily life. Yeah. We thank you right now. Thank you. In your daughter's son's Jesus' name. Yeah. Randolph asked me the other day, uh, his way of asking is, uh, say, Tom, are you going to do a 10-minute? Uh, <laughs> I did say brother Tom. I did say brother Tom. Tom, are you going to do a 10-minute talk? And uh, I said, yeah, what is on? Uh, just spiritual talk, some spiritual. <laughs> Which is good because you know you you know, you're not really limited to what you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Today I'm gonna to talk about serving. Okay. How we serve and why we serve. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm always looking for help. So if I take a step in the wrong direction, please correct me. Because mm -hmm. we don't want to leave here with the wrong understanding. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Amen. My pastor the last Sunday uh, did a sermon from Acts about Simon the Sorcerer. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you will, if you got your Bibles, which we'll go to Acts 8. Because this kind of got me thinking about what our motives are sometimes for serving. We want to be part of this army. Amen? Mm -hmm. Close, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Right. It says, but there was a, I'm going to start with the ninth verse. It says, but there was a certain man called Simon, mm -hmm. who previously practiced sorcery in the city, mm -hmm. and astonished the people of Samaria. Brother, it probably be all right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go through four different scriptures. So, uh, <laughs> if, if, I don't know if you want permission to sit down. I'm not the one to give it, but if you feel like you need to, that's fine. <laughs> it said, but there was a man, a certain man named called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed from the least of the, to the greatest, saying, this man is a great power of God. Amen? Right. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Mm -hmm. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. And when they came down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying on the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> he offered them money. Said, Give me this power. Amen. Amen. Sometimes uh, when we get to the point in our lives where we turn our lives over to allow the Lord to use us, it is for his kingdom building. Amen. Amen. Somewhere in that walk though, we can sometimes get caught up in what we want to do. Amen. Now, Simon had a little power, but he wanted more. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to buy it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, are we like that in some ways? Mm -hmm. To where when we get in a position, it's not that we necessarily have to pay for it with money. Uh, okay. But when we get in a position to lead others, sometimes ourselves can get in the way. And we want a little more. Mm -hmm. But why do we want that little more? Is it to make things better for 
the, for the church, for Christ's church? Is that, I mean, is that what we want it more for? Or do we want it more so we can stand there? For our own selfish reasons. In other words, the education I received through the word of God through my pastor is, is that, listen, I don't count. I don't count. I'm here, but I don't count. Let me help you if I can. Paul in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. Paul said, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all men. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, even though I count, I don't count. Because it ain't about me. My job is to help others get to Christ. Amen? Let me show you. Let me give you another example. Here we go. And Paul continued on and he says, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant of all that I might win the more. And, and then he says, and to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. So on and so on. He says, to the weak I became as weak, so I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Amen? Amen. Now this, here's the key. Here's that reason why we serve. This I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be a partaker of it with you. What I see when Paul is saying that is, you know, sometimes, like uh, Pastor Wilford said, when, uh, when some of his members don't show up, God sends somebody else. Yes, sir. Now, when that somebody else comes into your sanctuary, and participate in worship service with you. What do you do when the service is over? Or what do you do when you walk in? Amen? As brothers, it's hard to welcome or to bring a brother into the fold if he's sitting over there and you stay over here. All right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Paul, to me, all, all he said was, wherever they are, I reach out to them. I reach out to them. That's what we do. If you want to know why we grow in here at brother in our brotherhood at the Little Flock Baptist Church, it's because we reach out to each other. All right. We reach out. And it don't make and that brother tell you, it, it, it don't make no difference who you are, where you came from, or where you stay right now. We reach out to you. That's why we serve. Amen. That's why we became servants. Is to reach out to our brothers. Amen? Because our brothers have to lead. Yeah. And, if, and if we don't know how to lead, and if we can't teach our brothers how to lead. Right. Amen? Amen? So we serve in order to make this whole Christ kingdom building better. That's one thing. Now, Paul said, do not, do you not run? Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? But one receives the prize. We are searching for a prize. And it's, it's, but it's the eternal prize. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So serving is the only way we can get there. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to serve. Last point. Mark chapter 10 verse 35. That's where I'm going to start. Because this was the ultimate example of, of why we should be serving. It says, then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. He said to them, what do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, grant us that we may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said to him, we are able. So Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink the cup that I drink, and with the baptism I am baptized with, you will be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to, greatly, to be greatly displeased with James and John. But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles, Lord over Lord it over them, 
and their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. I, I wanted to point these out because I don't want you to think I'm, you know, somebody told me the word said it. Mm -hmm. You got to be a servant to all. Why? Verse 45 tells us why. That's the greatest reason of all. Because we came up here one day and said that we wanted to be like Jesus. I accept the Lord as Savior as my leader. I want to be like him. I want to do what if you want to do what Christ Jesus did, read verse 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. What better example do we need? In this walk, what better example do we need? Might have had questions if it was just Paul who did it. We might have had questions if it was just <laughs> Philip following instructions or Peter or John. But Christ himself, the Son of Man, said, I came to serve for all. Gave his life as a ransom. And our brotherhood, if we're going to attract men, men that God wants, then we got to be men that God wants. Way to, be, way to do that is to be served. Amen. 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 Amen.